Hello dear friends, welcome to Shiksha Mantra. Here before we start a fresh discussion, I would like to ask you one question. Can you tell me why sometimes in the formation of relative clauses you add commas and sometimes you don't? So you would find relative clauses with commas and without commas. But why is it so? Can you tell me the answer? Okay, so far we start the discussion. Go in the comment section below and answer me why it happens and in the meantime we'll start our discussion regarding this particular factors so let's begin shiksha mantra yes dear friends before we learn what's the clue for such use of commas and sometimes dropping of it. It's better for us to learn another thing and which will be the key point in the learning of these factors uh, regarding commas and uses of relative clauses. So here we have another point for you to ask and the discussion we are going to have today is types of relative clauses because it contains everything it will answer all our queries so let's begin our discussion regarding types of relative clauses but before we start can you tell me how many types of relative clauses are there in common books in your normal grammar books you won't find such things there you will get the relative clauses and how they are coined how they are formed and uh, there in the examples sometimes you get some relative clauses with commas and sometimes without commas but here, the most important thing is to learn the types of relative clauses which aren't available in normal books. So let's begin our discussion of types of relative clauses first. Yes, dear friends, relative clauses are basically of three types. And what are they? They are defining relative clauses, non-defining relative clauses, and there's the third one which we call connecting relative clauses yes dear friends just remember these three relative clauses defining number one number two non-defining and number three connecting relative clauses everything is there the clue with which we have to fight with our formation of relative clauses and handling of them lies in what lies in there types so let's begin our discussion with defining relative clauses yes dear friends this is the first relative clause that we will work with so what is defined relative clause we would learn everything but with the help of a picture and here it is with this picture we will learn the three different clauses their uses and also the use of commas so let's begin our discussion with the picture this is the scene of a park and obviously this is a morning scene and here we'll find several people they are working there uh, some walking some exercising some running and also there's a couple with their baby was having a groupie as well so i'll go to that discussion but let us focus on something here we have our first sentence regarding this scene. The boy is having morning exercises. The boy is having morning exercises. Now can you tell me which boy we are talking of? It's really difficult for you to find out the particular boy. From here we have used the boy. Definite article the has been used. Still we can't say which boy we are talking of. There comes adjective in our help. Just check what happens if we put an adjective. Obviously here we have put an adjective phrase. The boy in red t-shirt is having morning exercises. So the boy in red t-shirt, when I share this, that means when in red t-shirt this description is added, what happens readily you can find out that we are talking of this boy. So the boy is at once detected. And it happens for what? It happens for the 
adjective phrase yes dear friends that's the function of an adjective an adjective describes an adjective defines so very easily we can find out what the boy we are talking of now what happens when we put a relative clause in its place the boy who is in red t-shirt having morning exercises so here we have a clause in the place of that yes this is the clause so we have this clause in place of what in place of this phrase now what happens just check it the boy who is in red t-shirt having morning exercises so when i say the boy who is in red t-shirt actually we can very easily find out which boy we are talking of so this relative clause separates the antecedent noun that means the preceding noun the boy from the rest of the group and at the same time the relative clause is also describing the boy so it's making the boy definite so we call this clause the defining relative clauses now here another point that's very important here we don't use a comma we don't separate the clause the relative clause from the antecedent noun you may ask me why try to read the sentence without who is in red t-shirt without this relative clause so what you'll read you'll read the boy is having morning exercise the boy is having morning exercises now it's very difficult for you to get which boy the same thing happens here as well the boy is having morning exercises and we failed to find out which boy we are talking of so we cannot separate the boy from the group the boy means the identity of the boy creates confusion so here when we are doing with defining relative clauses you must remember that without the relative clause you can't get the meaning the proper sense of the sentence so this is defining relative clause and for uh, the students i have a very simple trick that i usually use write down this sentence in your copy write it now right right yeah have you completed so when you have completed writing down this sentence put your finger on that relative clause who is in red t-shirt now without the relative clause read the sentence you'll get that it remains incomplete the sentence creates confusion so you'll very easily understand that this is defining relative clause and we mustn't put a comma here so what finally we got finally we got to basic characteristics two basic characteristics for relative clauses the first of them is it makes the noun or pronoun definite this is the first thing it makes the noun or the pronoun definite and the second is it separates the noun or pronoun from a group so that's all about defining relative clauses and now we'll learn non-defining relative clauses so what happens for non-defining relative clauses it's better for us to have another sentence there's a fat boy running with his friend so there's a fat boy we have an adjective here with the noun so what happens very easily we can detect that we are talking of this boy only okay we are talking of this boy only so there the noun the antecedent noun that we are working with is already definite in the defining relative clause the antecedent noun was not definite so we have to define it with a defining relative clause but when the antecedent noun is already definite we mustn't define it with a defining relative clause there comes non-defining relative clause so the same sentence if we produce what will be there's a fat boy who is running with his friend now follow this relative clause who is running with his friend this is only an extra information for the noun boy 
because the boy is already defined it's already definite so what happens if you write down this sentence again write it down and then press the orative clause with your hand now read it there is a fat boy there's a fat boy there's a fat boy no problem is there with the meaning and you don't need the support of some extra sentence to complete this sentence to complete this expression so it's already defined there's an adjective a fat boy and with this it's defined so we can easily find out so what happens here we only add an extra information with the relative clause uses here and here you must remember you have to put comma for non-defining relative clauses for defining relative clauses we don't use a comma but for non-defining relative clauses we have to use comma that's it but what's the characteristics of a non-defining relative clause it only adds some extra information for the antecedent noun or pronoun this one is only an extra information it's better for us to try it with another sentence the singer with a guitar let's take him the singer with the guitar so what we'll say the guitarist who is uh, playing a tune on the guitar is giggling at the same time so the guitarist who is playing a tune on the guitar is smiling at the same time so what happens here we are adding an extra information for the guitarist the noun so that's all about non-defining relative clauses so just remember two points that we have already discussed defining clause it defines it separates the antecedent noun or pronoun from a group and it describes this we don't use comma for defining relative clauses and more than that uh, defining relative clause is essential for the sense of the sentence then comes the non-defining relative clause here the antecedent noun is already definite so we only add an extra information for the antecedent noun and we use the relative clause non-defining relative clause with comma so these are the discussion for two different relative clauses that we have completed so far and now here comes the third one connecting relative clause so the very word suggests connecting so what does it mean connecting means it will couple it will create a connection in between so where do we make a connection it's very simple suppose uh, you have to um, uh, you have to make a garland a garland of beads what you will do you will connect the beads with a string what happens for a rail for a train there several compartments several units are connected together so one with the other so far if you consider what we have had in our discussion for relative clauses we we are working on a single clause on a single noun this is actually very much important every time we were producing a sentence the fat boy who is running the fat boy who is running or the boy who is very fat is running so every time we were producing a sentence with relative clause we are working on a same noun but for connecting with relative clauses for connecting it won't happen rather it would be very different so what comes here it's better to watch an example we are watching the fat boy who is running hard to beat his healthy friend just look we are watching the fat boy who is running to beat his healthy friend so what happens here the story is uh, actually in focus here we are talking of this fat boy and this fat boy is uh, running hard 
to beat his healthy friend. Look, so far in the other sentences, we didn't have focus on this boy. But here, the story shifts from the fat boy to his healthy friend. So here, this relative clause is also used with comma. Now, why we call it connecting? Because it has the quality of a compound sentence. We may produce the same sentence as we are watching the fat boy and he is running hard to beat his healthy friend and he is running hard. So we have produced a compound sentence with this. That's why we are talking. That's why we are saying it's connecting relative clause. So I think you have got it. If still there is any confusion, you may write it down in the description box below and I'll try to clear it with some other videos. But for now, we must remember that for connecting relative clauses, we use comma. But what's the magic in connecting relative clauses? Here the story shifts from one to another, a progress their progress is uh, uh, observed. So the main feature for connecting relative clause is that it don't describe like a defining relative clause. It don't add, it doesn't add uh, information as non-defining relative clauses. Rather, it continues the story. The story is continued by using a relative clause which has a very or uh, equal force to that of a compound sentence and we call it connecting relative clauses. So by observing this, this picture, one picture, one scene only, you can learn these three types of clauses, defining relative clauses, non-defining relative clauses, and obviously connecting relative clauses. So now here I'll try to synopsize everything for you in a nutshell. So what we get, we get three different types of relative clauses, defining, non-defining and connecting. For defining relative clauses, we must remember it describes, we don't use comma with it. And at the same time, it actually separates the preceding noun from the rest of the similar kinds of nouns present in the sentence. And then comes the non-defining relative clauses. Here we use comma. Non-defining relative clauses is not used for describing because it's already definite. The noun is already definite. And here we use comma. It only adds extra information for the noun or the pronoun. And then comes the connecting relative clause. Connecting relative clause is actually used like a compound sentence because it continues the story so this is the story about the relative clauses and use of comma with them if you have found this video very much essential for your learning of english grammar then you have shiksha mantra to subscribe with the bell notification so that every time we post some very much effective video on learning you would get the notification first and you can stay with us so that's all for today we are returning very soon till then happy learning